day, I'm, I'm 90, I'll be 94 years old, April 18. You won't believe this. It has something to do with women, I bet. I never smoked until I got it, until I got the invade, uh, when we invaded uh, Africa, then uh, November 8, 1942. I never smoked until we hit the beach in the, on the invasion of Africa. Then I, I start smoking, see? Mm -hmm. But after I came home, I smoked a little bit and that, and I said, oh, what the hell? Oh, I said, I, they, what am I doing? So I quit smoking. And I started cigars, and I quit that. And never smoked anymore. I don't drink whiskey. I don't drink beer, never have. I tasted beer one time, and, and the liquor, ooh, never, never. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So I have a little wine when I eat sometimes, a little wine, that's it. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna follow that from now and, on. And, and another thing, I don't stuff myself with a lot of food and all that, you know, and uh, that. See that nice waistline right there? Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm envious. I, I didn't graduate. I had to go to work. Yeah. So they sent me to the CC camp at the Allegheny State Park. I helped build them roads that go over the mountain until the Quaker side and all that worked there. So, <laughs> and then when I got out of the CCs, things were getting kind of hot, you know. There was no war then. I told my buddy Alex Alaska, I says, uh, hey, let's, let's join the Navy, that's gone. Things are getting kind of hot. So we went down at, uh, on Third Street where the old place used to be over there. He says, uh, then in the Navy guy, he says, did you graduate? No, we can't use you. How about you? He told my buddy Alex, oh yeah, we'll take you. Next door was the army re recruiter, you know, he had his door open and, and hey, we'll take you. He said, well, okay, Tom. So we joined the army. They sent us to, uh, 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 where was that place at? Uh, Port Jane. That's Port on Governor's Island, right? Yeah, Governor's Island. Port <coughs> they sent us over there. <coughs> I said, holy mackerel. It's an island, you know, surrounded with water, you know. And then, and there I took my training there, and I, my bunk was where I could see the Statue of Liberty, you know. Mm -hmm. So after a while there, they had, uh, Governor's Island, they had general prisoners there, you know. The guys that had to serve five and ten or whatever you, and, and uh, I used to get guard duty, guarding these guys, you know. <laughs> I'd take them out, I'd take them out all the way around, you know, and I, I said, sit down, you guys, and yeah, I'd, I'd give them a few cigarettes, and, and I, I'd take them with me, you know, and, and you know, they always were waiting for me <laughs> to take them out. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, all at once, they did uh, the 16th Infantry, they decided to move. So they moved us to uh, Fort Devens. Oh, Fort Devens, oh my God, and that was Fort Devens. So, at Fort Devens, they had the brick barracks in the front, and the wooden barracks were in the back, way in the back. So we were in the wooden barracks, you know. And behind our barracks, way back in the other part of the woods was, uh, way back there was this uh, uh, colored outfit, and his colored outfit, that fir tree there. And, uh, at that time, we were mixed, you know. The, the, the colors were all by themselves. They had their own barracks, their own mess hall, their own thing. You know. So, after a while, and then it was that, I was on KP one day, all at once. After I was in there, like, oh, it must have been about a year, and over a year, I think. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. 
I was on KP one day, all at once. The sergeant comes out, he says, hey, nobody's getting discharged. The Jeff's just struck Pearl Harbor. Holy Moses. I said, oh boy. I, hey, the first thing you know, we was on maneuvers, we was on, on the beaches in Merle Beach and all over the place. And the next thing you know, they send us a, send us a camp landing in Florida. Oh my God, I said, we're going to Florida. Well, we had equipment for fight the Japs, like, you know, light equipment. Huh? When I, we got the camp landing in Florida, I said, what the hell? I said, where the heck is the camp? Where, where's the barracks? And, uh, no, but it was all jungle there. It was a brush. You know, it was a lake back. Well, I think there was a little lake back there. Snakes and stuff. So we had to build the tents and the wood around there. Four guys in the tent, you know. And then we had to build walks out of uh, boards, you know. So <laughs> and it was pulling maneuvers in the swamp. And uh, holy Moses, I, oh my God. I mean, near a stump over there in the swamp, you know, and it was all water, you know, one. And you know, once I, I see a damn snake coming out, oh my God, I said, oh, you had to watch yourself there. So, meanwhile, and we got through, they took us to Pennsylvania, Indian Town Gap. Oh boy, a nice, you know, Indian Town Gap. So, uh, I never, since I was in the Army, I never had a pass, you know. So uh, I, I went for a pass, and they gave me a three-day pass to go home. I came home, and uh, I went, I went back. Boy, oh, hell broke loose. Nobody could make any phone calls. Nobody could do this. Nobody could do that. They had MPs all over, and we were loaded on it, and we are getting all the equipment change the equipment, heavy equipment, ODs, you know, no light shirts or anything like that, you know. Right. I said, what the heck? Away we went, big convoy, right next to, uh, uh, what the heck is that ship there, Queen Mary. Queen Mary. Well, right next to Queen Mary, you know, and we loaded on the Queen Mary, 16,000 something troops. Now where we're going now, hey, we're going to fight the Japs all night, man. Zigzag. You know where we landed? We landed in England. <laughs> what the hell was it? The data? So we got, the big ship, the Queen Mary couldn't go in there, so we had to get in these smaller boats to get out and get on a train that was waiting. Big train on. So we got a train. And now where we're going, so. So then we, we go, we were stationed 30 miles, I think, from London, Tidworth Barracks. We were at Tidworth Barracks at Tidworth. And it had a, a wood, it was all brick building, nice, you know, and a big gate there. Uh, Tidworth Barracks, uh, you, part of your job was to go out and, and uh, help the farmers and then local by. Oh, uh, the farmer's wife had, had a yen for me, you know? Yeah. Uh, she wanted to write in that damn. I'd, I'd go down there. And I said, oh, you know, I want to write your, and your uh, lorry. And your lorry is a truck, you know. I said, oh, I, I said, oh no, I, you know, I can't, I'd get in trouble. If I, I ain't supposed to write civilians, you know. Oh, no, no I won't say, no, give me a ride, she said. Okay. I'm like, all right. Go down that road there, this way, that way, this way, that way. First thing you know, I was in, I was in a road, a dirt road, a narrow dirt road, going down all kinds of pines on both sides. I'm going. <laughs> I says, no. And when you get to the end, and you're in a circle, a big circle around you, going, it's a good spot. You know, let's let's you and I get in the back of the truck. She said, you know, and, you know. Oh. And you know what happened after that. Then uh, the next day, I went on a run again, and she wanted to ride again. And I went, okay, we go for a ride. And finally, I had a nice Irish girl I was going with. She got wind of it, and she squealed on me. And <laughs> <laughs> she squealed. <laughs> I just, 
holy mackerel. I said, the guy says, hey, that your girlfriend there, she told the farmer, you, 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 his wife's going. I said, oh my God. I got back to the camp. I told the captain, I said, you know, so and so, so and so. We will, I won't let you go on that run anymore. You stay. So somebody else went, and and that farmer said, "You know, you got a GI over here. He's, he was driving, and he, my wife has been seeing him. You know." I says, "He says no. He shipped out another <laughs> outfit. Nine, nine. <laughs> and five days later, we shipped out. All right, we we boarded the uh, the." Big convoy, and we landed in Africa. I said, Goodbye. <laughs> well, I didn't want you to. I want to make sure you're not a casualty there in <laughs> oh, Scotland. I, hey, my, what did I do? I'm, I'm young. I'm, I have that. She was kissing. Well, she, well, she kept insisting, you know. Yeah, and she wanted to go the next day, the next day. Oh, what the hell? Is this? Oh, damn, what the hell? Go away, God. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, the, them lieutenants were no, and, and uh, officers were no angels, you know, and especially when we landed in Africa, you know, and uh, we took over, we took it over, it took us, I think it took us three days, you know. Teddy Roosevelt come down the road there and the, the bullets were flying all over. Uh, of course, the, the, I call the goons, the goons, the Singalese, you know, big, big, tall, colored men, you know. Mm -hmm. Boy, I said, they were, they were against us, you know, the Vichy, you know. Right. The, the Senegalese, yeah. Yeah. The Senegalese, yeah. Yeah. And boy, one come across the road, uh, uh, around, uh, near the beach, they had these huts, you know. One come around, uh, around the damn building there, and I let him have it with my BR, and I said, and they saw my gun, he kept coming, you know. They, you know, they had, I, boy, I said, my knees were shaking, and I was... <laughs> Our first time I ever shot a guy, you know, mm -hmm. you know. And it ran. And then the uh, captain came and said, You stand so, get your Burke's bag. What the hell is going on? Right away, on the train, and we took off. We hit, uh, hit Kasserine Pass. Put me in a tank. I, I said, I don't know anything about a tank. I'm an infantry man. I don't. Well, you know everything how to shoot the machine gun, and now you're going to be a machine gunner in the front right there. Yeah, we had them stupid General Grant tank. The General Grant tank, you know, is square. And if you're 45 this way, straight this way, and to shoot to the rear, you had to turn the whole tank around, you know. We didn't have the Shermans, you know. And uh, boy, did. Romel, he kicked the hell out of us. Boy, we talked. We didn't have Patton. We had some other, we had another general there, you know. So we got Patton. As soon as we got Patton, boy, we really kicked their butt. And we kept right on going. You know something? I'll tell you one thing. That was a great, I like Patton because he didn't. He was there all the time. You seen him around all the time, you know. He was. He was in the yellow belly, you know. So, by God, if it wasn't for Patton, the Germans would have kicked our butt and we would have been back on the ships again. Yeah. Welcome to Raleigh's book here. Uh, you, you, you're such a great storyteller. Uh, in the Kasserine Pass, you were talking about one incident when you know, your tank got hit in the ass end by an 88. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it got hit. I got on that. You know, I was in three tanks. Actually, I got hit. Two of us got out of one, and the other one it was. Uh, let's see what that. It was three. And the last one, I was the only one. And uh, uh, when I when they came, to, uh, the English it was the English or Canadians? I don't know what the hell they were. You know. I was out cold. When I came to, I didn't have no clothes on. No clothes. The only thing I had is my shorts. 
that, that damn Al Ramsey stripped me. I, I didn't feel nothing. I was out about that. Yeah. I got hit in the head. Yeah, I still got it. And the master knocked me out cold. And I had a, a couple of pieces of little shrapnels on my butt, you know. Matter of fact, I still got it there every time I sit down. <laughs> every time. And so uh, they patched me up. And, and if I got my, I got went to a field hospital, and uh, you know, field hospital was out, you know, tents. We didn't have any where they took you way back. <clears throat> they patched you up and sent you right back again, you know. Pat came around in the tents, you know. He gave a, was coming around giving a, a purple heart, you know. So it's what they call a field purple heart, you know. You know, people, you know. So we got the field purple heart, I got the field, what they call a field purple heart, combat, you know. One day, when well, out in the desert there, you know, Captain Johnson says, uh, Hey, Costanzo, you, 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 get in the half track. It was, it was at night time, you know. And uh, we got in the half track. And we took off with the mines. We had mines, lay mines, you know, for the damn tanks, you know, when they were going to come through there, yeah. So I had these mines, these round mines, you know, that are round like that. And I was, <laughs> I was carrying the mines, and somebody else was carrying the, where they put the detonators in there, screw them in there, and dig the holes and put them in there nice, you know. <laughs> All at once, holy mackerel, we, get, we got caught in a crossfire with a hole. The bullets were coming, you could see at nighttime how the tracers, you know, coming crossway. And the, the sergeant said, let's get the hell out of here. So the half track was taking off and I, I had damn mines, you know, some, some more mines. I got rid, I'm running after the half, half track and I had a, a chain over here with a, a St. Joseph on there that my mother sent me, you know. I'm running and, and I grabbed the tank and on the end of each tank there was a thing sticking up and I hooked over and grabbed there and flipped me right into the damn track, you know, I finally got my hand in. But my St. Joseph bracelet is probably 10 foot under the ground in the desert yet. <laughs> I got to, we got out of there. Boy, I'm telling you, they, so, it's a, yeah. It's a, you also talked in the book about the fact you were in a tank one time and you took a direct hit. Oh, yeah. We were, uh, uh, what the hell was that? Uh, Near Gafsa? Gafsa, I think. Alcatar or Gafsa, we had a uh, defilated position. Yeah. You know what a defilated position is? Yeah. Just the, the tank of it. And we got hit. Hit the front. That AP, shoom, shoom, cut the damn rifle pop in half like. And, it was, and we were fighting like hell with that still there. So finally, we uh, we uh, did pretty good there. Got back to our lines, and the tracks fell off, and everything, and <laughs> and uh, we got out of the tank and I looked. I said, "Oh my God, that AP where I sit with the machine gun in there, you know, and you got a little slit to look through there, you know. You can't see what's going on, the only thing in front of you, you know." I looked at it when I got out. It was like you ever take a, a spoon and take a big scoop of ice cream out of it like that, right in the front there where I root, and it went up, boom, and, and it cut the, the 75 in half. Oh cut it out. Jeez. And everything fell. Holy Moses, I said, oh my God, if that thing would have hit me, it would have knocked me out. There was another battle there where, where Captain Johnson there, he was, I was in his tank, you know, because I could talk it, well, Italian now, and understand Italian. He's always uh, giving direct 
had given orders, you know, fire, fire, up elevation. In that time, but, you know, the tanks, they didn't have all this equipment, what they got now, you know. And he said, elevation, raise it up a little bit, raise it up you know, and, and to knock out something, you know. So all at once, boom. They didn't hear nothing. Boom, we flop, flop right. We had the flaps open on the tank, you know. Holy Moses, he got it right up. Took his half of his head right off, dropped in it turret there, and, uh, and uh, the one guy there, the, we got a new guy because we every time we, every time a guy would get killed or something, we'd go down to the uh, depot and pick up some more guys and replacement, you know, you go behind and pick guys you want. You know, uh, this one guy, he went, he went crazy in that damn tank, you know, and, and uh, so I went, the sergeant said, get back there. So I went back there and we took this, the captain and took his body out and put it on the side and I mean, put his dog tags in his jacket. And I don't know whatever happened to him or somebody. Of course, well, we used to uh, bury the guys, the damn Arabs used to dig them up and take their clothes and take the uh, bag that we used to put the dead soldiers in. And we, We'd find the sort of dead soldier on the top of the ground, and we had to bury him after we, you know, they had the burial detail, you know. Now, that's what, when I was in the infantry. Uh, we was going up and truckload a convoy. It was at nighttime, you know. I says, and all at once, you know, these planes, the German planes coming over, and they dropped the fl flares, lights up the whole place, you know. Holy mackerel. And uh, all the guys run. Got up, we ran on this side, you know, and I blew the, captain blew the whistle, they all ran on this side. I said, what the hell, huh? So I ran on this side. I said, what the hell, what the hell, these guys are going over there. I said, you know, when, uh, then when it was all over, the guys, the captain blew the whistle, everybody getting on the truck. And I, I'm laying flat over there on, the, on that one side there. And I'm come on. The way I went in, the way I came out, and he's looking at me. He says, geez, you're one hell of a lucky guy. He says, that place is all mine. You know, they knew where the mines were. They thought they had a mines, you know. Because the engineer guys mined it before. Boy, you're lucky. I <laughs> was. <laughs> I was wondering what the hell them guys running over that way for. <laughs> what the hell are the guys are going over there? I'm just, you know, when, uh, then when it was all over, the guys, the captain blew the whistle, everybody getting on the truck. And I, I'm laying flat over there on, the, on that one side there. And I'm come on. The way I went in, the way I came out, and he's looking at me. He says, geez, you're one hell of a lucky guy. He says, that place is all mine. You know, they knew where the mines were. They thought they had a mines, you know. Because the engineer guys mined it before. Boy, you're lucky. <laughs> While you were in Italy, uh, there were, you had a chance to use your Italian when uh, the lieutenant uh, thought there was a group of Italians that wanted to surrender. Second lieutenant, we just got him, you know. He says, Costanzo, get out of the tank and crawl up there and I think they see if they could get them guys, the Italians, to surrender. <sighs> Holy mackerel. Bah. Artillery flying all over the place, you know, and, uh, the Germans, you know, and the Italians were in the front, you know. And uh, the Germ if the Italians used to retreat, the Germans shot them, you know. So, <laughs> so I uh, I call out of the goddamn tank, and I'm like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get killed now. I said, no, they, I call out of the tank, and I'm crawling, I'm crawling, I'm crawling. So finally I got over there. And I, and I, I had a something in my hand. I went and, and I started hollering. One, I, I got close enough, and I started hollering. We quit firing, you know. And I told them, they thought 
I was one of the, one of them, you know, because I was talking to you. Oh, you you're on American side? No, I I said I'm an American. You know, surrender, and if you retreat, the Germans are going to kill you. You know that, you know, and and surrender, and we'll take you prisoners. You know, but and meanwhile the goons were coming up. The goons were coming. The infantry were coming up from behind. You know, so all of us and you know. They were, they were the what they call the bristleri, you know, mm -hmm. the, the the cream of the crop. The guys they fought in, in the deserts all the time, you know, war before, you know, they had the, the hats with the feathers on. They're like the Marines, you know. I said, well, there was a whole bunch of them, you know, and they had surrender, their hands up. So got down there and they stripped off all the ammunition, threw everything down, and. Uh, Meanwhile, they, they, uh, they were going to send him a couple of goons who were going to take him back, you know, I call them, the goons. They used to call them the goons, you know, Singalese. I says, you know, they were, instead of taking the prisoners back, they were shooting them, you know, killing them, you know. I says, you better send a couple of guys or maybe three or four guys back with the, with the well, we had a, I think we had about 200 prisoners there or more. I don't know what, how much it was. And, uh, and I said, you got some uh, captains there and you got a major in there. And I said, they got a habit of shooting them, take them behind the dooms and shooting them. Yeah, so we sent two or three guys back with them. And uh, I saved, I think I saved them guys' lives because after North Africa, uh, then you went, uh, you were going to invade Sicily, and you said, Sicily? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, my grandma lives in Sicily. Yeah, my <laughs> so we, we landed in the city, city jail there, and uh, Patton says, Montgomery was supposed to take Messina, you know. And my uh, pants said, we're not stopping for nothing. We took everything. We kept the road. <laughs> we passed uh, uh, to, uh, so we come to Capito Orlando. And I said, hey, up there, Capito Orlando. I says, that's uh, up in the mountain up there, you know. They're mountain people. My my uh, father's mother and father were mountain people, you know. And they lived up in the mountains. He says, so the sergeant says, uh, oh, we're chasing the Germans out towards Messina. I said, take this road over here, we're going to go up there. Why not? They got a few Germans up there. Probably not. So we took that road and winded, winded, and winded. We got way up to the top. Boy, you could look down at the Mediterranean. It was so beautiful and blue, you know. And then we, we took it. Then we got the top. And then we come to a village called Nazo, you know, Nazo in Italian, Nazo. That means nose. nose. I says, what the hell kind of name is it? And then we stop by and we ask the Italian, you got a few Germans over there? Oh, yeah? Okay. So, and you got to watch yourself, he says, in Italian nose, because they got, they, okay. And so, we had the, we had the jeep with the machine gun mounted up there. We went down and shh, shh, and come down to Tutterisi. They call Tutterisi. By the way, that's where Roselli's, what it's called, you know. Yeah, yeah. They're all beautiful, beautiful people up there, nice people, loving people, you know. They ran up. They might, this is, uh, I went down there. They got down, Germans blew the bridge that goes uh, across, you know down there at the end of the road, you know. So we couldn't get across there. Well, we got the Tutterisi there, and uh, uh, we uh, we had to turn around and come back, and then we stopped there. And uh, these uh, people were standing there, and there was a little girl there. Uh, by the way, uh, in Oran, we captured the uh, Ugolano. Uh, he was a... Uh, he was in the Italian army. We captured him in Oran, and they sent him. They sent him to the states. You know, all the prisoners. They they right. sent him yeah, and uh, uh, captured him in Oran. You know, and uh, and the little girl. 
she's here in Jamestown also, and uh, she recognized me, and she's living there at Pentagro with her husband, and, and she recognized me that uh, and she's still living, and she's living up there. And Yugolano, he passed away. Mm -hmm. I captured him in, in uh, or this is Oran. And, uh, I got and, you. Uh, did your grandmother, when you saw her in Sicily, did she try to convince you to stay? When you that? when you saw your grandma in Sicily, yeah, she she said, "Oh, I went." And I see. I, finally, I see my grandmother. You know, I, after it was over, I got a two day, it was a two day or three day pass. You know, I went down. I went. She was in, She was not in Tutirigi. She was in Termini. Yeah. So I went to Termini, and uh, so I. And there's a Termini, and I see my grandmother there, and by golly, she, she died when she was 104 years old. She was smoking stogies. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Yeah, stogies. He said, well, you stay. I don't want you to go to war. Uh, well, all the people there will protect you and hide you. No, 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 Grandma. I says, that's desertion. They'll line me up and shoot me. <laughs> oh no, I can't do that. I was taking Naples, the, that damn uh, volcano was erupting and all the ashes were coming, he was coming down there. All the ashes were coming. So we took Naples and that. And, uh, and from Naples we took uh, uh, Caserta. Caserta. Uh, and we took the uh, concert and they, they, they made the big headquarters of uh, Ally, AF, AFHQ. And it was uh, Caserta and, and Benevento. And uh, meanwhile, I, this here uh, lieutenant, I got orders. I got orders to take him back to Sicily. And I thought, oh boy, I mean, I get, they get back to my outfit, you know took this lieutenant, that lieutenant's in the book there, mm -hmm. and I took him down to Sicily, you know, and I, boy, did I had to cross a lot of, uh, I had this big, big truck, you know, it had some equipment in there, and boy, did I had to cross rivers and stuff like that with that damn truck where the Germans bombed off the thing. So I got him in, I got him in Sicily there, then finally, I got back to my outfit. I got shipped back to my outfit. But some of the some of the guys were still with uh, Clark, and they finally, finally, they all got back to England to get ready for the big push. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was 1944. So 1944. My granddaughter. Yeah, yeah, and you are going to Normandy, and we haven't even talked about D-Day. Oh, D-Day. Oh. The Allied forces landed in France early this morning. I watched the first landing barges hit the beach exactly in broad daylight, the, the tremendous armada of 4,000 ships of all design, size, and shape began to move out of the British ports and across the choppy rolling channel. And at the appointed time, the Alsees moved on, many abreast, and spewed their men onto the beaches, the first to set foot on European soil since the tragedy of Gieff. Let's talk about D-Day. Oh, D-Day. We landed on what they call... Uh, what the hell was it? Easy Red is supposed to be. Easy Red? Well, the 1st Division was the first wave in there, you know, 16th to 16th, you know. And uh, so it was Easy Red. Jesus. Man, are we coming in there and the waves were so damn high, they were picking us off from left and right. And the boats were flying all over. And then finally, holy cats, I... The uh, LST that I was in there went sideways and it was, you know, I said, totally mackerel, they got, I says, I got to, we got to get the hell out of here. Anyway, so everybody was, I think that was, uh, oh yeah. So uh, I was sitting on uh, top of a thing over there and I said, I'm getting the hell out of here. We're going on towards shore. I'm, I'm going, I'm going overside. So I forgot to unstrap my my uh, thing there. Boy, when I hit that damn thing, I thought I broke my neck when I went to poop, you know? Uh, funny. 
I kept on getting going down. No, we had the packs, you know. We carried the packs with our rations in it and the pack full of things. And I'm, I'm going in there, oh my God, I finally, I finally made it. Then I had my, my BAR strapped across my shoulder when I went in there, you know. I said, oh, gee, dog. I finally got there, and, uh, and the guys, you know, the guys at the uh, invasion of uh, Normandy in uh, Omaha Beach, we had new guys, you know, from, from, from the States in England, you know. They kept shipping the guys to England. Uh, the guys were new guys. They'd never, never been in combat, you know, and all that stuff. All they were in maneuvers in the state. But us guys, we was in invasion of you know, Africa, Sicily. We knew what the hell to do, you know. And these guys, when they go, got to the beach, they got up standing up. They were getting mowed down. But the guys that been through it, we didn't stand up. We were crawling, you know. We were crawling down there, getting behind them. Got to the hedges, you know, what they call the hedges, the goddamn Germans were on the Head, Yeah, the hedgerows, yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Finally, we got past the hedgerows, and I, and I get called, and and the and captain called me, and I said after, he says, yeah, it was about uh, two, two hundred of us or so or something, taking us back, and you know, of of the old old guys, took us back to. Uh, Italy, course, to back to uh, EFHQ, the Army of Occupation there, uh, and the MPs, you know. Uh, all us guys has been through the hell and everything, you know. And uh, and we I, and uh, we were patrolling with the jeep from uh, EFHQ and Caserta, I mean, uh, uh, Benevento and Caserta, from Caserta to Naples. Because in Naples, they had a few of those uh, officers who were, was in the black market, you know, they called the black market, you know. And uh, so uh, we had that job, and we, uh, we caught a few of those officers. Uh, they were selling all that, all our cigarettes and all the stuff to the, you know, stuff like that, you know. And uh, we got them. So finally one day he come on, call me in. Well, you're going home. Okay. So they sent me to Naples. <laughs> I, got, I got to Naples. What the hell is this? I look on it. They call it the racetrack, you know? Racetrack, you know, big place, big. All pup tents in there, two guys in a pup tent, you know? And you wait to get your orders. Yeah, okay, two guys in there. And I got a slip. You get a, well, it was a red slip or whatever it was. Uh, you get a green slip, you fly home. You get a white one, you get the ship. So this guy that was bunkered with me in the pup tent, you know, you, you got a half a tent and the other guy, got a, you make one tent, you know. And then, he, got, he, got, he got lucky. He, he flew, he's got, the tag to fly. I got the tag to take the ship home. <laughs> oh my God almighty, I said to myself. You know, so I got him by a boat, the ship. It took us nine, nine days to get home. When I come home, it was late, you know. I went to the YMCA and knocked on the door, you know, and knocked over there. And, uh, they have rooms up in the YMCA here in Jamestown here. Mm -hmm. I, 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 had a, I was tired. The guy didn't want to give me a room. I, here I am in uniform. I, I, I said, I, I need a place to sleep tonight, and I want to go. I don't want to wake my folks up, you know. And I, and I, and I, he hesitated, you know. So he finally gave me the damn room, you know. And I took it, and I slept. I took a shower after, and I, I come down. I had a little duffel bag on down. I was born on Water Street, you know, in a house next to the Worcester Mill. I was born in the house, you know. 
I lived there all my life. And uh, it was noontime, I finally come down. <laughs> and I had to, I always travel like, I had a duffel bag. Of, and uh, and uh, in the worst of mill, you know, the time the women, the Italian women were working in the worst of mill, you know, they were, it was noontime, you know, and they were sitting on a pipe, you know. Nobody even noticed I came home that day, you know, every day, it was, and, uh, back in them. And they were sitting and sitting on there, and uh, and uh, I knew some of them by that. And they waved at me, you know. And uh, it was uh, it was George Patelli's mother. She was single then, and and I knew all them girls. They all lived on while George Patelli and, and all that. They're nice people, you know. And, and I got I finally I got by the time I got to my house on Water Street there, and. Uh, there was a bunch of girls there, there my, my sister and all that, and, and my sister looks in, and all the way she run over there, she got all the girls. <laughs> they gave me a big hug. So what was your first meal? Do you remember your first meal when you came back home? My first meal when I came home? Off the ship? Yep. Well, no, well, no, when you came back here in Jamestown. So you come back, you see your mom and dad and sister, and, and they must have made something for you. Yeah, it was spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, boy. You know, you were awarded the uh, rank of corporal. You got two bronze stars, a purple heart, a combat infantryman's badge, expert rifleman combat badge, American campaign defense badge, the World War II Army of Occupation Medal, the European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, the 1941-44 World War II Medal, and six gold service bars. Yeah. And you're going over to Normandy. I think about that. I, I still, at nighttime, I, I, I get funny. I get dreams about my guys, you know, and I, such good guys, you know. What the hell do we have to? There's plenty of there's plenty of stuff on this earth for everybody. What you know what it is? They're crazy. Some of these people have got crazy and they want power. They want power, see? No. I you know the way I look at it? Mm. Yeah. It's the way I look at it. Yeah. If I was a president, maybe I'm talking wrong. I don't know. It's freedom. I could talk the way I want to talk because I fought for my freedom and all the people. This is a free country. If I was a president, I'd take all my boys home from Afghanistan, all over the world where they're at, and I'd tell them people, you want to be our friend? I know Britain will be our friend. In all these countries, you want to be our friend? We'll do business with you people. And, and you people that don't want to be our friends? Too bad. Take our boys all home, never send another boy overseas to get killed and lose their legs and stuff like that. And another thing, them boys, them, them Vietnam boys got a raw deal too. Them poor guys are dying, uh, Agent Orange, and these guys are dying with their legs blowed off, coming home, no legs and stuff like that. Come on now. Take our boys home. Mm -hmm. Never send another two. Never send another boy over there. Protect this country. Make it strong as if they monkey with us. We'll annihilate you. We're not people that want war. We were peaceful people. We're not. We're not people going in and taking other people's countries and treating people like animals. No, we're not. We're we're Americans. Well, enjoy your trip over to Normandy. I think it's exciting and uh, you get to go with your granddaughter. I think that's terrific. <laughs> you know, one of the granddaughters, she, uh, she's in uh, uh, Lake Tahoe, Nevada. You know, my daughter's been there 25 years. And she said, I want to go. I'm playing my own way and everything, Grandpa. I, I, I want to come with uh, Megan, you know. So, okay. Both of them are nurses. Ah. So I told them, I told them, okay, when we get over there, you, you two nurses take care of me and you do the talking because I can't hear too good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, my God. Well, you've been great, Tony.